Hi everyone, it's Alexandra from Maker40 here at scrapbook.com and today I want to teach you textured heat embossing. Yes, that really is a thing. But first of all, I need you to promise me you will only use your rubber stamps for this. You can use any red rubber stamp or any of the Maker40 white rubber stamps, but you must solemnly swear you will not use a photopolymer because this technique will melt your stamp and you'll be very sad at the end of it. So you are warned, but the results are well worth it. So let's dive straight in and have some fun with this. You can use any dies. You can use any piece of cardstock. Here I've already cut out my U die. This is a two part die and I have my other pieces down here as well. You're gonna want some clear embossing ink and any embossing powder. I'm using Pebble Dash because I want this to look like a wood grainy, rustic -y kind of thing and it's gonna look fab. So we're gonna start off with some layers of embossing powder. So I'm just putting some clear ink all over this. This one is really nice and sticky and you can use a piece of scrap paper. I like using the parchment carrier sheets because they are silicone coated and they don't introduce static into your embossing powders. So I'm gonna just take this little lid off here. This is a brand new one. And this one has chunks in it. So it has some chunky crystals and some fine crystals so it's gonna give you that really lovely effect. So we're gonna just drop this off of here, tap it off. Now you can also build this up with some chunky crystal embossing powder, or if you have ultra thick embossing powder, you can do that. But just know that the technique is gonna be just a little bit different if you do that, but definitely play around with it. I love having fun. So let's heat this up. You want it to melt all over and it doesn't matter if it's even, like I've missed a few little bits, it really doesn't matter at this point because we're going to build up our layers first of all. But Pebble Dash is this like ivory color as you can see. It's got flecks of black and gold and it just reminds me of being at the beach. So that's why we, we called it that. So heat it all the way across and then we're going to reapply our clear ink and add probably three to four coats of embossing powder on here. Now the more coats you add, the thicker the dimension you're going to get at the end of it. Um, you do not have to necessarily ink every single time. So let me show you what I mean. There is our first layer there. If you are now going to add ink, make sure you just wait maybe five to 10 seconds before you go back in because I have had it that it's fused to my ink pad just because it happens so fast. So you're going to put your ink on and put your next uh, one on. If your item is smaller, now my U is quite big, but if I was doing a smaller die cut or a smaller piece of cardstock, then I don't necessarily have to add the clear ink each time. I could just pour embossing powder over it, but that's a little bit harder when you're doing a large surface. So you'll just kind of have to uh, work out how big the surface area is for your project. So I'm gonna just repeat this a couple of times. Again, heat it all over. You'll notice the hotter it gets, the quicker this process will go. And I'm using regular 110 pound Maker Forte Crafters Essentials cardstock. You don't have to use anything heavy, but if you want to, we do have a chip off the block paper, which is like a thin chipboard. It's heavier than cardstock. So if you really want to go to town and have fun with this technique, then that's definitely another option. But just the regular 110 pound. I love this one because I've got lots of the pebbles coming out over here. Just giving it a second before I reapply the ink. And also you want to make sure that the surface you reapply the ink on is not the same surface you pour the powder over. I'm sure you can imagine how I found out that mistake. But otherwise you just waste your powder. None of us want to waste our crafty supplies. So this is layer number three. I'm gonna add maybe a couple more, but those chunky crystals that are inside of here are really gonna help this process go faster. But imagine when you see this doing this at Christmas and for Father's Day cards, masculine cards, and it's any texture. As long as it is a rubber stamp, red rubber, or Maker Forte's white rubber, this technique will work. So all of a sudden, we're bringing out all those background stamps that are sitting at the back of your crafty closet, and we're gonna do something different with them. So here is that one, maybe this one and one more, because I really want to get nice and deep with that texture. You see that was a little bit hot when it first started and that's what it does to your pad. It's not going to damage your pad on a long-term basis. Um, it might actually hurt your fingers more than it's going to hurt your pad. So just be careful, maybe grab some off the hook tweezers if you want to, um, just to hold them. There are hook end tweezer, so you can use those too. 
as I say, if your piece is smaller, you don't necessarily have to apply the glue ink every time. But just because I have quite a big expanse, I find it easier to do that. You'll find which technique is easiest for you. And now we're going to add on our last layer. We need to do just a little bit of prep work before we do that. So let's heat this one up. And of course, the more layers you put on, the longer it takes to cool as well. So it's kind of like a cumulative effect on here. So I probably can just about slide this on if I'm fast, tip the embossing powder on. And I don't need any glue ink because it's retaining all of that heat on that. You can see I've got quite a good impression on that. So before I heat that, let's put our remaining powder away. We're gonna grab out this shiplap background. It comes with a big panel and two smaller panels on here. And this is a deep etched rubber stamp. So let's go. So we're gonna just heat this up to the last time. Again, you want everything to melt. And the nice thing is it gives you a nice naturally rounded corner as well. Make sure everything is nice and warm. And now you want to make sure all over stays quite warm. So I'm just going to give it a second, maybe like 20 seconds, just going backwards and forwards, trying to get it as evenly warm as it can. Also with the embossing powder, it self levels. So that makes it super easy. And then you want to make sure you've got your stamp and your smusher ready to go. So let's go in. So we're just going to take our stamp. And now we're gonna smush. And you want to wait till it solidifies. So we're just gonna give it a second. This, I mean, this takes no time, maybe 30 seconds. And I just keep going with my smusher over it, making sure I'm putting pressure on it. And you kind of feel when it's done, you can have a little peek. I think this one looks pretty good. And then when you peel it up, all of that shiplap texture is inside of your stamp. So now you can put the Y O U over the top and it looks like you've got this beautiful rustic wood grain. Now, if you did that process and you didn't like how it looked, just reheat it. As you reheat it, the embossing powder will flatten back out again and you can stamp into it a second time. So you get lots of goes at this. So until you're happy with it, but it's a really fun technique and probably supplies you already have in the craft room and yet another way to use them and stretch them. But please swear, you'll only use those rubber stamps because we don't want any melted photopolymers. Thanks for joining me and I'll see you soon.